Hi everyone, my name is Anaya Raisingani. I'm an associate developer advocate over here at MongoDB. And today I have a really cool demo for you guys about Data Federation in Atlas. So for those who might not know, Data Federation is a really great way to get a completely unified view of your data, even if it's in different collections, clusters, or even spread across different cloud service providers, such as Atlas and AWS. So to follow along with this demo, all you need is an Atlas account, an AWS account, and MongoDB Compass already on your machine. So let's get started. To save some time, I have actually already created our cluster, which I have named Bookshelf. And so I wanna show you guys the data that I have in my Atlas account already. So we can go over here and click Browse Collections. And in my Bookshelf, I have uh, two collections named one and two, very fittingly. And in these collections, I actually have three books in each of them. So three books in one and three books in two. And as you can see in bookshelf number two, I am the author of one of these books and the title is named Purple and there are 200 pages. And same with one, I am the author of a book named Yellow and it has 150 pages. So this is the data that we have in our Atlas account. And now we wanna merge it with data that we have in our AWS account. So first things first, let's look at the data that we have in our AWS account. I have just created a little JSON file. And once again, I am the author of a book named Pink and there are two other books in this JSON file. So now let's upload it into our AWS account. To upload your data from your JSON file into your Amazon S3 bucket, just go over here and click Create Bucket. Now we're gonna name it Anaya Bookshelf. And I'm just gonna scroll all the way to the bottom Keep everything the same and I'm going to hit create bucket. So now it's been successfully created. I can scroll down here and click Anaya bookshelf. Let's get this out of the way. Now I have no objects but I want to upload my JSON file. So we'll go over here and click upload and I can add files and here it is, AWS Bookshelf. This is the one I want, click open. And there it is. We have our AWS Bookshelf JSON file in our S3 bucket. Hit upload and it's uploading. Amazing. Now that we have our three books in our S3 bucket and our six books in our Atlas cluster, let's figure out a way using Data Federation to combine all nine books into one virtual database or one federated database. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. So go over to your Atlas UI, hit Data Federation and click on Create Federated Database. Now we wanna add in our data sources. So first, let's start with the easy stuff. We'll do our Atlas cluster. This is really simple because of the way we set it up, we have both of our collections already in one cluster. So as you can see, you could pick which one you wanted, but we want both, so we'll just do all of them. And if you had your information and your data in separate clusters, you can still do this. You just have to do it twice. Um, so this way we have both of our collections under bookshelf and we can click next. So now let's drag them over to the middle. We have bookshelf one and we have bookshelf two. Now we want to add in another data source from Amazon S3. We want to get the other three books. So hit next. Now we are going to do, we're going to authorize an IAM role. Hit next again. And we actually have a role trust policy.json file here. So it describes a trust relationship that allows Atlas to connect to your new IAM role. That's why you're authorizing the role. So I'm gonna copy this in right here. Go over to my VS, copy that in and save this. After you do that and after you enter your new name for your I am role, it actually auto populates the command, which makes it really easy. Just copy it over. But before we do this, let's make sure that we have our AWS command line interface downloaded on our machine. 
So we can open up our terminal. And then I downloaded it in, our, in my desktop. So we can do AWS version. And yep, we have it downloaded, perfect. Now we can copy in the command that was auto-populated for us, hit return, and we're gonna get this. Let's check again what is prompted to us in our Atlas account for what we need for the next step. We need the role ARN. So let's go back here and let's find the ARN right here. Copy that in, head back and paste it. Hit next when you're done. So now we need to enter the bucket name that we want. So our bucket name is called Anaya Bookshelf. Let's copy that in, hit next. Now just follow the instructions on the screen um, and save this other JSON file, which is our policy. And so this is what, this is the role policy that actually allows Atlas to access what is in your AWS account. So it's really important Make sure that you have the correct name here. Make sure it matches up with your bucket name. And then, so I know that mine does. Mine is just Anaya Bookshelf. So I'm gonna copy it over and then put it in my terminal. And I've already saved the file, so that's why I'm able to just copy and paste it. But if you haven't saved the file, please do that first. So copy that in. And it worked. Awesome. So you can go here and click Next. Now we need to enter the path from our bucket located in our AWS console. So we can go to our AWS console, click on the file, and as you can see right here, we just need the S3 URI. So just copy that in, go back, and paste it. Now we just want to leave everything static. So using the drop down, just click static, and then click next. And we have it on our left hand side. So once again, just like with the collections, drag it on in. And we can keep the name Federated Data Database Instance Zero. We don't have to mess around with that. But as you can see, we have two collections from our cluster and then one data source from our AWS S3 bucket. Now let's hit Save. And now let's connect. Click Connect. We want to connect using Compass. And I have Compass. So I'm just going to copy that in and then open up Compass and paste that. And don't forget to change your username and your password. So mine was Mongo Mongo. And I'm gonna hit connect. And let's check if it worked. So with federated databases, they're also called virtual databases. So click little drop down and then click, click your file. And let's see what we have. There should be nine books. And as we can see, this is one of nine, so there are nine books. And we have our three that I put in my JSON file. And you can tell by the IDs because they weren't auto-generated. So we have our three from our JSON file, which was in our S3 bucket. And then we have our six from our MongoDB Atlas cluster. And as you can see, I am still the author of three of these books. So now let's query on this data and let's also make a very basic and simple aggregation pipeline just to show you guys what really is capable with data federation. First things first, let's query over this data. So the data that was originally in three separate places has now been combined in a virtual collection and we can see every single book. All nine of our books are in one place. And as before, you can only query over one collection or find data in your AWS bucket. But now all of the data that was in all these separate places, I can query on, I can make an aggregation pipeline on, I can really do anything I want. I can treat it as if it was one original database, which is really, really cool. So let's do a simple query, just looking for my name, Anaya Raisingani, over these nine books, and let's see what happens. As you can see, after the query, we have Anaya Singani for all three authors and for pink, purple, and yellow, which are the titles of my fake books, that they show up, which is great. So now let's go a step further and create a very basic little aggregation pipeline. 
so first things first, over here we're going to see that we have all nine of our books available to us. And with aggregation of pipelines, it'll give you a sample size of 10 documents. So I picked nine so that we can see all of them. And I'm just going to go over here. And the first aggregation operator that I'm going to use is going to be dollar sign match. And this is just so that I can match kind of the same thing that I did before with the query for Anaya Rice and Ghani. I want to match all the books that have the string Anaya Rice and Ghani. So we're going to go here and the query is going to be author. And look at that. As you can see, the output after match is all three of my books. Let's take it a step further. Let's add another stage. So now I want to sort my books by page number. As you can see up here, I have two books that have 200 pages and one book that has 150 pages. So I want to sort it so that the book with 150 pages, yellow, comes first. By doing that, I can use the aggregation operator dollar sign sort. And then my sort order is going to just be with pages. Pages and one. And look at that. 150 is the first one that shows up. And if I wanted to do it the other way with 200 first, I could just do negative one. And then it shows me 200, 200, 150. So for my last stage that I'm going to show you guys is I'm going to do match again. And this time I just want to, out of my three books, I've decided that I really want to read a book that only has 200 pages. So I'm going to do match again and this time just match by 200 pages. And there we have it. So this is our little aggregation pipeline and it really shows the bare bones of it, but there are so many use cases that you can use data federation for and this aggregation pipeline for way more complicated use cases too. And if you have any questions about any of the operators, please check out the documentation. They go into immense detail about what every single operator does. So thank you guys so much for following along with my data federation tutorial and showing you guys how to do it in the Atlas UI and with MongoDB Compass. I hope you guys learned something and had a lot of fun watching. So I'll see you next time. Thank you.